Hey everyone, welcome back to another MK11 tutorial video. Now, one of the most frequent questions that I've seen come up in my other MK videos that I've made so far is people asking, how do you deal with spammers slash how do you deal with zoners? People who are either spamming projectiles or they're playing a keep out game and they're just destroying you. How do you get in against people like that? Before we go into answering the question, uh, we have to establish that there is a distinction between zoning and spamming. A zoner is a type of character that has many options to keep the opponent out. Prime example being Cetrion, she's a zoner. Uh, other characters, Noob Saibot is a zoner. Kitana to some extent is a zoner. All these characters, Jade, of course, how can I forget Jade? All these characters have a range of tools that are designed to keep you at full screen and frustrate you. Zoning is a completely viable tactic in any fighting game. You know, just look at Guile from Street Fighter, uh, even like Pretty Lady in MKXL, although MKXL had shitty zoning, but still, all these characters, well, like 80% of the cast, cast of Injustice 2, all these characters were zoners, uh, and if you are dealing with a zoner who knows what they're doing, they can be an absolute nightmare to deal with, even for a very experienced player, someone way more experienced than me. However, a spammer, on the other hand, is someone who takes a projectile that is a real noob killer, fast, travels quickly, you can just spam it over and over again, and just destroys people who do not know how to counter it online. Prime example I've seen floating around of this type of playstyle is with Kano. So today I'm going to show you how to counter that. And by learning how to counter a spammer, hopefully you can then apply those tactics to counter actual proper zoners as well. So for this I'm going to pick one of the big body characters. Shao Kahn is perfect, Kotal Kahn works as well. The reason is, actually let's go for the other variation. The reason is that these characters have huge hurt boxes. And most of them, well, actually both of them, have really terrible jumps. Even though most of the cast has bad jumps, these two boys have even worse jumps. Geras falls into this category as well, making it even more difficult for them to jump over projectiles, which is going to come in... Uh, it's going to be important later. All right, let's pick a stage and let's get into this. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about people who spam. One of the things you have to understand is that spammers often rely on one tactic and one tactic alone. The tactic they're using. Often, people who spam have very little idea of the actual mechanics of the game. If they did, they would play proper zoning instead of spamming. So, based on this, if you do know how to counter them and do know how to get in on them, 90% of the times they're strategy will completely fall apart. They will not have any idea what to do since you are constantly countering what they're doing and they do not know enough about the game or the character to actually have an answer for you. However, to set up this type of practice, practice against annoying projectiles, set your reset option to full screen. Now you're going to be very far away and all you have to do is go into record. Again, I'm using Kano because he's a prime example of a character with an annoying projectile and just record it. So now he's going to be throwing out his projectile at the fastest possible speed. So this projectile, how do you counter it? Well, the bad way to counter it, what a lot of people do, is they try blocking. Now certainly blocking works, however, it carries some disadvantages. First of all, you take chip damage. As you can see, I've gotten in, but I've lost like 10% of my HP. The other problem with blocking is that you get pushed back each time you get hit by the projectile. Do you see how I'm getting slowly pushed back? Yeah, that is a problem. Another thing you could do, and let me see if I can pull this off, is try and flawless block it. Certainly, apparently I cannot get it. There we go. Certainly flawless blocking has its advantages. 
You just have to get the timing right. First of all, you take no chip damage. That is a good thing. However, the problem with flawless blocking, even if you can perfectly flawless block every single projectile, you still get stopped in your tracks. So the momentum is still shifting towards your opponent. Certainly, if your opponent sees that you're flawless blocking everything, you should be scared. I mean, he should be scared. However, you know, there is an easier way to deal with these types of projectiles. You know, flawless blocking with lag, frame delays and all that can be kind of difficult to pull off sometimes. Instead, the best way to deal with high projectiles is ducking and slowly walking in. As you can see, by ducking three or four projectiles, we are up in the face of an enemy. Again, just walk forward, duck. Walk forward, duck. Now, of course, because this is something that's recorded, it's impossible to simulate uh, what a real opponent would do. You, the real opponent might back up, they might dash backwards, they might do some other moves, but just understand that if they are walking back, they are slowly pushing themselves into the corner. Now, once you're at this distance, you now have several options. First of all, you can jump in. And I specifically picked Shao Kahn to show this. Uh, jumping in works for some characters and doesn't work for others. Certainly, jumping in can start a huge combo and lead to big damage. Again, it doesn't work with everyone. Uh, the big bodies, they are going to have trouble. Sometimes I try jumping over, I can do it. Sometimes I will get clipped. Apparently now I'm doing it perfectly. But just know that there is a chance that you will get clipped, especially if you're playing these larger characters. Another option, jumping in, other than jumping in, is to find the best quick forward advancing move for your character. Now, believe me, 90% of the cast has a move like this. For Shao Kahn, it is his forward 2. For Scorpion, it's his forward 3. Uh, noob, wait, not Noob Saibot. Uh, Kano even has one. Again, just look at your character's moves and find something that moves you forward and is relatively quick. Now, once you're at this distance, you can use said move and get a full combo punish. You'll see that as I'm as I'm doing it, I'm getting the little counter icon to appear. That means I've punished what the opponent was doing. Here, even if he tried to block, he couldn't uh, because I interrupted him. Just to show it again. And again, back to jumping. If your character has a good jump, go ahead and do it. I mean, use it. It's completely... Oops, I did the wrong thing. It's completely viable. You know, for someone like Frost, who does actually have a decent jump, it's perfectly okay to use it. Usually, that's how you deal with an annoying zoner. Of course, if you have a projectile yourself, you can try throwing it. The reason I'm not doing that with Shao Kahn, and again, Shao Kahn is a good demonstration for this, is because both of his projectiles start up extremely slow. So... I'm going to lose every zoning, well, most zoning battles, if I get into one. Instead, again, use the duck and advancing tactic. Now, of course, not every opponent might be this stupid. What a lot of people tend to do is they mix in a Kano Ball every once in a while. Now, the Kano Ball is a problem because it is a mid. So, if I try to advance... I will get clipped by the Kano Ball and be pushed back. Now the thing you have to understand is all of these types of moves, these forward advancing knockback moves, have a counter to them. The thing about Kano Ball is it's unsafe. I think in fact it's negative or minus 19 so or 18, I don't remember, extremely unsafe. Even if I, oops, even if I can do the move, even if I amplify it, it is unsafe. So if you're quote-unquote encountering a smarter spammer 
who throws in these types of moves. Really, it just comes down to going into practice mode, seeing what those moves are and finding a counter to them. Because all of these types of moves have a counter, believe me. Kano Ball is unsafe. Uh, Johnny Cage's glow kick is a high, so it can be ducked as well. Jade's glow kick is a high, it can be ducked. So, whichever move you're getting hit by has a counter. Now one thing that's a little bit more annoying to deal with is characters who have low projectiles as well as high ones. Cabal is a perfect example. Those types of projectiles, the best thing to do is either reaction jump it or reaction hop it. Believe me, the hop is an important tool in this game. Uh, it can be used to quickly go over projectiles like that. Or you can jump as well. Against those types of players, it's better to do neutral jumps than jumps forward because if you jump a low projectile, they might do a high one that you'll get clipped by. It's better to just jump over the low ones and then advance when they do the high ones. Really, what I'm trying to say here is spammers, there's a counter to everything. Now again, as I mentioned at the start, someone who knows how to zone is going to be a lot more difficult to deal with. A good Cetrion player, believe me, is going to give you troubles. But that's completely okay. It's a Zoning is a viable tactic. The thing you have to understand is that the tactics you learn here can be applied as well in those types of situations. You have to consider that Cetrion's projectiles, most of them take a long time to recover. So the option of blocking, since most of them are mid, and moving forward works. Also for her projectile where she goes into the air, uh, it has a long startup. So again, by practicing this, moving forward and moving in on zoners and dealing with their annoying moves, you can then apply those tactics and fight against someone who is actually a problem. Because really the thing about zoners, I mean spammers, is not to get intimidated and not to get flustered. I know it's easier to say than do, but that's just, you know, part of learning fighting games. A few times you're going to be destroyed by these people. Day one, a Kano who used these tactics I'm showing you absolutely wrecked me. I was getting flustered, I didn't even know my combos yet, I was concentrating on doing my moves with Shao Kahn, and yeah, it was a problem, it was messy. Now it probably wouldn't work on me because I've taken the character into the lab and kind of experimented with countering them. So, to wrap it up, hope you guys found this little tutorial slash guide useful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, comment and all that. Let me know which aspects of MK11 you would like to get help with, whether it's combos, learning characters, uh, dealing with these types of tactics. Just let me know and I'll see if I can help, because I definitely want to pump out a lot of MK11 content. So, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you guys very much for watching, and yeah, peace out. Goodbye.